I'm just. Nude. I'm nude. Okay. No. Okay. Let's uh, let's do this. Ready? Okay. We have a lot of news. Okay. So um, we don't have a ton of headers, but we can. Uh, the Grand Central still has stock, but we can get you a Grand Central without headers, which I've been meaning to put in stock anyways. Like, this is a perfect excuse to get in while we're waiting for uh, those big headers to show up. So this is a skinny Grand Central. It kind of has a purplish PCB. Uh, it's going to be more purplish soon. Um, but I thought I'd show this to you on the overhead. So if you are like, oh, I want a very thin board. It's a Grand Central, has that 7051. Now we know you can overclock it to 200 megahertz. Um, we give you a DC jack, but we don't solder it in. I figured you might want this, but it is really chunky, so we left it off. And then you can solder wires to it uh, if you like. And uh, it's basically a Grand Central. It works just the same, but doesn't have the headers installed. You can get bumpers, though. And it's less expensive because, of course, the headers aren't included. So uh, if you wanted a Grand Central and uh, headers aren't needed, pick one up. All right. Okay, we got a rainbow of thermochromic inks. These are really neat. Um, you've seen these on like t-shirts and mugs and stuff. These are inks that at uh, 31 degrees C or like 88 degrees uh, Fahrenheit, um, they turn from a color to a clear or white color. And um, I would like to show you all the different colors that we have because we got seven different colors. I didn't get yeah. every possible color, but I got the most popular ones. We, so, we have it on the site so you can pick. You can get it as a rainbow pack. Yeah, we get a rainbow pack as well. We get one of each color, pink, red, orange, yellow, green, uh, blue, and black. Yeah. And here is, they come in packets of 10 grams, and it's just the pigment. So you can mix this with wax or resin or oils or water, you know, whatever you can put this pigment in you like, you can make paint out of it. Um, we made some basic, simple watercolor paints. We just uh, absorbed it, you know, dissolved it in some water and painted it on. And I can also show you, uh, it's, it, it changes color at a very low temperature. So, you know, if you put your hand on it and I'm kind of warm, I'm not very warm, hold on. If I can get it to change. It's a little cold in here. Hold on. I can breathe on it. So I'm still alive. And um, my even though my hands are cold, um, my breath is warm enough. Let's see if my hands. Do you want to try? Oh, okay. yeah. You're much warmer. So, okay. yeah. If, um, if you have something that's 88 degrees uh, or 31 degrees C, it'll uh, change the temperature. And, yeah, it comes in these pigments which uh, are, the bag is reusable, but you know, once you open it, of course the pigments kind of get everywhere. And same deal, you know, you've got this pigment and when it gets warm, it turns a light color and eventually white. It's in a bag, so it's gonna be a little bit more insulated. Um, but they have a couple different colors, uh, pick which ones you like. And uh, if you want to heat it up, we have heating pads. We also have um, some electronic controlled fabric that you can heat up like a you know, resistive fabric and you can use that to heat up as well. I think we actually have a project that maybe Sophie did a bit ago with these inks. Um, these are super fun, so okay. try them out. Uh, we also got this LED ring. It's kind of simple, but I kind of like the look of it. Um, probably made for a project or product and, and the company was like, hey, we have all these LED rings left over, do you want any? Um, it uses through-hole NeoPixels, so it's still NeoPixel compatible, but there's these like, kind of chunky little through-hole NeoPixels, and they have a neat diffused look, which is different than most of our rings. So um, you can see they stick out, but they have kind of like a softer dotted look. It also doesn't freak the camera out as much. <laughs> yeah, because it's diffused. So if you do a live engineering show, you might want to get this. Right? Yeah, it's <laughs> not nearly as bright, and you get, I don't remember how many, well, obviously four here, and I don't remember how many on the other rings, but it's in the product page. You just solder to the bottom and then, you know, the out, you can string to another one. That's kind of a neat looking ring, so I thought we'd pick up a couple. Okay, next up. Okay, next up we have an e-ink friend. So we have all these e-ink panels, and I actually, I actually designed this for myself. I'm doing so much e-ink experimentation, I needed something that would let me quickly, quickly connect to 24-pin e-ink displays, which is a kind of a common standard. Almost all the e-ink uh, display makers have stuck to this one standard. Plug it in and you can wire it up to your microcontroller. Uh, it has level shifting in it, so you can use it with three volt or five volt microcontrollers. It has the boost converter stuff in it, and it also has SRAM. And we put uh, 256 kilobits of SRAM on there, so you can control up to 4.2 inch displays. 
if you do the math, these need basically 256 kilobits. I like products that you make because you're making so many products. That I'm like, I need a product for yeah, this product. Yeah, that you need a product to make the products. I like those. So this is like a Feather 32U4. So it's not actually got enough memory to buffer this entire image, but because... Um, Actually, don't there's know a screen. Is. There's a screen protector on this in case someone asks. Oh yeah, yeah. I, it's just a protector. They're actually not bubbly. But I can I can peel it off. Um, yeah. But you can see it, it. You know, reads from the SD card and updates this gigantic 400 by 300 uh, it's display. It's a big display. And hold on, I, I will peel this off. This is a little shiny. And um, so you can drive up to 4.2 inch ink displays. You don't have to use the SRAM. But what's nice is it even chips with very low memory can drive very large displays. And because e-ink updates slow, it doesn't matter that you have this extra chip in you know, in between. Uh, and it just buffers it and use it with our GFX library since it's just, just drawing a bitmap or you can draw text or lines or whatever UI elements you would like. Okay, next up. I'm gonna put this back to protect it. Likewise, uh, let's say you want to have an e-ink shield. You have an Arduino shape board and you want to have e-ink. This e -ink is crazy. Eye. Oh no, there's like thermochromic ink anywhere, everywhere. And then, where did my ink shield go? Oh. Uh oh, hold on. I got Shoot. photos of I it. I think I left it on my desk. But, um, yeah. I can talk about it here. Talk about it. I'll go look for it on your desk. So, it's a 2.7 inch tri color ink display, and it's a fully assembled shield, and uh, you can plug it onto your Arduino shade board. It uses uh, SPI plus a couple of other GPIO pins, uh, like three or four. And uh, as a bonus, I asked Phil, should I put some buttons on the front? And he said, yes. Yeah, put some buttons so on. So I put some buttons on the front. So on the front, you get five buttons total, four um, GPIO buttons labeled A, B, C, D. This is not plugged in, so I'm not doing anything. And then a reset button. Um, there's an SD card slot as well. And it uses the SPI port. So it works with any Arduino compatible board and, and you know, it's, a, it's pretty easy. Um, you can display, uh, your tricolor e ink image on there, and of course, it has the SRAM as well. So, even on a 32U4 or 328, you'll be able to um, display um, large images without having to worry about running out of memory. And then, all the buttons, uh, these four buttons are connected to one analog pin because, again, it's, it displays slow. You can't do fast updates. So, you can read one button at a time and you know, have it display different uh, images, or maybe it connects to the internet and grabs something and displays it. Um, so, a nice little add on shield for your Arduino compatible. It's a little bit bigger than Arduino to fit the shield, but uh, I don't know, I like it. It's like uh, actually one of the first e-ink shields I've seen. Next up. This little boy. This is a 74HCT14. Uh, some people have had projects where they're like, oh, I have a high level and I want a low level. And I'm like, well, you could use a transistor. And they're like, I don't really want to use a transistor. This is a, uh, a level shifter slash inverter. You put high level in, it gives you low level out. You put low level in, you get high level out. You get six inverters. Uh, it's spec for five volts, but honestly, you can run it down to three volts. And what's nice is that you can use uh, almost any low, uh, logic level in, and uh, it's transistor level, and it will shift it um, up to your logic level out. So, uh, yeah, it's spec for five, but you can use it at three. It's fine, and uh, it's an inverter. Works great. Breadboard friendly. Okay. Invert. Next up. Uh, another panel mount cable. This time, it's a snap-in USB panel mount cable. Um, you have USB-A on the end, USB socket on the other end. What's nice about this is it's, it's a rectangular cutout snap-in. So if you, have, if you don't want, we have other panel mounts, but you have to screw them in. This is nice, you just cut, if you can laser cut or drill out and then, and then file out a rectangular hole, the, the size of the holes in the specs, I don't remember it offhand. Um, it snaps in very nicely and there's even a little bezel, so it kind of covers up the hole. Um, I can show this off on the overhead. So we have this piece of acrylic. But uh, very easy to use. You know, you've got these snaps, pulls out, and then snaps in, and it covers the hole very nicely. And this is translucent, as you can see. It comes out the other end. A very easy to use panel mount cable. Uh, people love panel mount cables. It's, a, it's one of the things that really makes a project stand out. So uh, this is an extension. So great for if you have USB hosts on one end, you know, any computer or single board computer or something and then you want to plug in a USB stick or Wi-Fi or what have you. Ah, nuts. These are some nuts. These are SMT standoff nuts. Uh, these are really cool. I'm using them in an upcoming project and I thought I'd uh, throw them in the store as a pack of 10. 
Um, we have three millimeter and six millimeter. Actually, let me grab my uh, sort of thing. I'll be right back. All right. Well, I'm just going to show photos of these yeah. things. Actually, this is what they're going to be for later, but uh, we'll talk about that. That's not out yet. Yeah, somehow we had like a five minute long 3D printing break, but I forgot to grab this. Yeah. So uh, if you go to the overhead, I'll show you. So what you do is you have a PCB and you um, put in, uh, I think it's, it's more, it's an M3 standoff. So I think you need like a four millimeter, four and a half millimeter uh, hole. And you have uh, an annular ring around it. And then when you paste it, these are come on a pick and place reel, but these of course are sold loose, but you would put some paste or solder on it. And then you can solder these in place. And they're basically, you know, standoffs that are like permanently attached to the PCB. So one, for the price, it's like you get a standoff and a hex nut and like you don't have to worry about assembly because it's like pre-assembled and it's solid. So you don't have the annoyance of like you're twisting it and like the hex nut's twisting. You're like, how do I keep it? Uh, this is firmly attached to the PCB. So you can mechanically mount something quite easily. Um, so this I never is saw like, these before. This is a really good idea. Yeah, it's a really, it's like, you know what's funny? I got these samples. They actually, originally, I got these for the Cricut. I thought the Cricut was going to use these, but I couldn't get them tall enough. So that's why this Cricut used standoffs, because I, I ordered yeah, these yeah. when we first did the Cricut about a year ago, and then they were sitting in my sample bin, but then when I got to doing the gizmo, I was like, oh, wait, you know, this is a perfect time to get these out of stock and, and maybe put them in. So this is actually showing the shorter ones, and then we have the longer ones as well. But basically, you only need um, screws on the other end, and the other the the side that doesn't have the standoff is totally flush, which is another nice thing. I didn't want to have anything sticking out on this side. I want it to be flat um, because it would get in the way of the screen. So this is a very flush, extremely strong mechanical and electrical connection. So we have them, and this is a three millimeter, and you can tell it's actually not quite long enough because you see it's it's binding on the uh, JSTs. But then, you know, you could update it to the six millimeter. It's much taller. So we have two lengths right now, both M3, and then you can use any M3 screw to attach it in. And I'm going with metric because I, I found that even though I grew up with Imperial, it's just easier to get all these parts in metric. Okay. And then the story of the show tonight besides you, the data, the data for your community, and all the people that are watching is Code Academy. Yes, we have the Code Academy for Circuit Python. Well, first off, when you get it, it's not just the Code Academy Circuit Python course. You actually get a full pro membership for a month, and it's like 50% off. Um, it's only like 20 bucks. Usually, I think it's 30 or, or more. And uh, it doesn't come with hardware, but it's your first trial. It's basically if you've never signed up for Code Academy before, yeah. um, they've got like hundreds and hundreds of uh, courses and tests and quizzes and guides on all sorts of languages, including Python. Um, but also C, C++, and JavaScript, and multiple other languages. Um, so you can learn how to code. And the Pro account gives you access to like pretty much everything they make. So you can go around and experiment and for one month learn and be tutored on any kind of programming language you could ever want to learn. And there's lots of folks that are already Code Academy um, community members. They're one of the 45 million people that have uh, learned how to code and get uh, more career opportunities, and this person right away, she said, it's like my dreams come true. Can't wait to try out this course. So um, we're really excited about this, and we also, um, we have a Circuit Playground video with you and Adabot that I'm gonna play This is part of this, and it says, here's all the different ways you can code with Circuit Python, and now mm -hmm. Code Academy is part of it. So take it away, Adabot and Lady Ada. Yay, pass me. Hey, Lady Ada, what are you up to? Oh, hey, Adabot. I was just programming my circuit playground. Playground? That sounds like fun. What can you do with it? You can do a lot with a circuit playground, like detect motion, measure temperature, Brr, that is cold. sense light, touch, and sound too. Hello! La 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 It even has a buzzer built in. Wow, Circuit Playground can do lots of interesting things. Yep, and the best part is you can combine all of these abilities to make really cool projects. Like what kind of projects? Like a tilt sensor. Detect a heartbeat. A musical instrument. 
or even interactive games. I won! And those are just a few examples. Get creative and you can make pretty much anything you imagine. Excellent. So how do you tell Circuit Playground what to do? Easy. First, you write your code. Then, you upload that code to your Circuit Playground. You can choose how you want to write and upload the code. Circuit Playground works with Circuit Python on Code Academy. This is awesome. I'm going to go get started on my first project. Thanks. Hey, I was using that. <laughs>